surfactant what now? Hey there guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're brand new here, hi! My name's Courtney and I love nerding out on ingredients and hair care products, especially ever since I got really interested in the Curly Girl Method about two years ago. Ever since then, I have really enjoyed using tips and tricks from this method to improve the health of my hair. And a few videos back, I asked you guys if you would be interested in seeing me break down the surfactants ingredients category and a bunch of y'all were interested. So here we are. In today's video, I will be talking about different surfactants, what they do, and how they function in your hair care. Hopefully to give you a better understanding of what these ingredients are and to give you the ability to read ingredients labels for yourselves and to feel more confident in your hair care purchases. Wow, I sound like an infomercial. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie guys, I've sat down and tried to record this video several times. The first time I did it, I talked for 45 minutes and I didn't even make sense to myself. The second time I tried to record it, I talked for 20 minutes, realized I was making less sense and so I'm trying again. Here we are. Fingers crossed I can condense all this information because honestly, what happens is, is I try to give you all the information instead of just the information you need. <laughs> so let's see if I can give you just the information you need. So if this video is helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up and share it. It does help me out and it lets me know that the video accomplished its purpose, that it was in fact helpful. That is the whole point of this channel to be as helpful as humanly possible. Also, if you would like to hang out with me on more videos where I talk about Curly Girl products, show you different Curly Girl method styling applications, and just in general nerd out on hair, please go ahead and subscribe and click that notification bell. I would love to get to hang out with you some more. All right, without further ado, let's start talking about surfactants. I've got some notes. First off, I would like to go over what the definition of a surfactant is because honestly, I didn't know what that word meant before I started looking into hair care stuff. A surfactant is basically a substance that reduces the surface tension of a liquid that it is dissolved in. So basically in layman's terms, it is something that gives a solution its cleansing ability. A detergent is a substance that has different surfactants dissolved in it. For example, your laundry detergent is probably mostly water and surfactants that have the ability to clean your clothes. Here is a great picture explaining what that looks like. I really love this image because it helps visually demonstrate what the surfactants are doing. You can see that one side of this molecule is attracted to the dirt, oil, grime, and it connects to it and forms this little bubble around it. And then the other side of it is actually water soluble. And so you are able to dissolve things in water that don't normally dissolve in water. And when you can dissolve the dirt and grime in water, it can be rinsed away. That is exactly how the surfactants in your shampoo work. They form little bubbles around your greasy oiliness that make them soluble in water so that they can be rinsed out. Here is another diagram of the four different types of surfactants. You can see that one side is hydrophilic, water loving and one side is hydrophobic, water fearing, it has a phobia of water. So having the two sides of this molecule is what gives it its cleansing ability. The surfactant labeled A is a non-ionic surfactant, B is an anionic surfactant, C is a cationic surfactant, 
and D is an amphoteric surfactant. And I'm not gonna go into too much sciencey detail. I tried that once already and I talked for way too long. Basically, just know that there are four categories and they each do something different. Now, I want to talk about anionic surfactants. These are probably the ones that you're the most familiar with as your basic surfactant. These include sodium lauryl sulfate, sodium lauryl sulfate, ammonium lauryl sulfate, and a variety of others written here on the screen. really good for are removing oily, oily buildup, butters, silicones. These are the ingredients that can remove silicones chemically. They have the chemical power to remove silicone buildup from your hair. Not all surfactants actually have that ability. After looking at all of those, you may be wondering, are all of those anionic surfactants created equal? No, they are not. Some are milder and more gentle than others. The two big ones are sodium lauryl sulfate. That is the big guns. That is the strongest anionic surfactant there is. It has the strongest ability to pull build up and oil, it's like really good at it. This is a really common ingredient in your laundry detergent and in Dawn dish soap. But sodium lauryl sulfate is a gentler sister to sodium lauryl sulfate. She doesn't quite have the ability to pull stuff, build up, off and as much cleansing power. Sodium lauryl sulfate and sodium lauryl sulfate are both not Curly Girl approved, not recommended to use when you're doing the Curly Girl method because they are so effective at stripping all oil, all silicones, all everything off of your hair. They are pretty powerful. Keep in mind though, that the strength of the cleansing ability of your product is highly dependent on the formulation. Some formulations are going to be stronger than others. For example, I talk a lot about the Suave Daily Clarifying Shampoo, which does contain a sulfate. I use it as a tool in my healthy hair arsenal. I wash my hair with that. My hair survives. I don't think my hair would survive if I tried to wash my hair with, let's say, Tide Laundry Detergent, which also contains sodium lauryl sulfate. Now I want to talk to you about my favorite anionic surfactant. And that's how you know you've nerded out pretty hard on hair care ingredients when you start to have favorites. Anyway, my personal favorite is sodium C14, C16 olefin sulfonate, or just simply C14, C16 olefin sulfonate. Both of those are the exact same thing. This is an anionic surfactant and it's a cousin to the sulfates, but it's not technically a sulfate itself. Some would say it's not Curly Girl approved and some would say, yes, it is Curly Girl approved. So just know that this is a strong, strong surfactant. It really has some muscles. It's very good at removing different kinds of buildup and it might be too much for some people's hair if your hair tends to be really dry and really prone to being stripped. Like if you're not oily, you might not like this ingredient. If you're really oily, like me, <laughs> you might love it. One thing that is special about sodium C14, C16 olefin sulfonate is that it has a unique ability to remove magnetic buildup. There are different kinds of buildup that you can get on your hair. Oily buildup, buttery buildup, buttery buildup. That sounds gross. You can get hard water buildup, and you can get magnetic buildup. There are other ingredients in your Curly Girl approved products that literally magnetically adhere to your hair and they are very sticky and very hard to get off of your hair. Once they're stuck on there, you're kind of stuck with them unless you use a shampoo containing this ingredient. That is all I'm gonna say on this because I'm pretty sure I've talked for forever about it. 
The next category of surfactant I wanna to talk to you about is the amphoteric surfactants. These are the ones that are usually derived from coconut. Many, many, many coconut derived surfactants are amphoteric. Some of the main ones are cocomidopropyl betaine, cocobetaine, and these others you see written on the screen. The amphoteric surfactants are really nice. They are very, very gentle. All of them are Curly Girl approved. There are no amphoteric surfactants that you need to avoid while following the Curly Girl method. These are the surfactants that most companies lean very, very heavily on when they are creating a formulation specifically for someone following the Curly Girl method. They are good at removing some oily buildup. They do not have the muscles to remove silicone buildup and they do not have the muscles on their own to remove magnetic buildup. Sometimes in certain combinations, you can get more cleansing power out of them, but if you just had a single amphoteric surfactant in your shampoo, chances are that it's not going to be able to suck all the buildup off of your hair. It will get enough, it will rinse sweat, it will rinse dirt, but it's not gonna get that really sticky stuff like silicones and magnetic buildup. The next category of surfactants I wanna talk about is quaternary cationic surfactants. These are the surfactants found quite often in co-washes. Now, these actually can form some magnetic buildup on your hair. They're not horribly sticky, like, some products that are magnetic buildup-y, but they also have surfactant capabilities. These are the mildest, most gentle surfactants found in co-washes because co-washes are meant to be extremely, extremely gentle. Some of these include behetrimonium chloride, behetrimonium methyl sulfate, cetrimonium chloride, and these. When I am wondering if a conditioner I have, like in my cabinet that's Curly Girl approved, is going to have the muscles to be a good co-wash for me, I check the ingredients label for these surfactants to help me decide whether or not I wanna try that product for a co-wash. These surfactants have very, very low chemical cleansing abilities. So if you see these, ingredients in your conditioner, just know that you're really gonna have to up the mechanical cleansing because they don't have the same chemical cleansing ability that a sulfate would have or an amphoteric surfactant would have like cocomidopropyl betaine. I like it because I can say that one really well. <sighs> and the last category of surfactants that I don't see just a whole lot but I see them some, are the non-ionic surfactants. And one of those that I'm really familiar with is decoglucoside and laurel glucoside. These have some cleansing ability, but again, are 100% curly girl approved. They probably fall somewhere in between the quaternary cationic surfactants and the amphoteric. It's really hard to find research on those cleansing ability of, of the non-ionic surfactants on the internets. But in my experience, products that contain these are not wildly stripping or clarifying feeling. So they're not as strong as the anionic surfactants. All right, now I want to take all of this information that I just gave you and apply it practically so that when you walk into a grocery store to buy some hair care products or into your local beauty store or are checking out products online, you can make informed decisions about whether or not the product's gonna work for you. I personally have to look for low poos that are more clarifying. My hair tends to lean towards being over moisturized. I'm very oily and I'm low porosity, which means that products build up on my hair like crazy. So the products that I'm reaching for tend to have more cleansing power than most curly girls are looking for. 
in their co-washes and their low poos. So let's jump right in. I mentioned this earlier in the video, but the Suave Daily Clarifying Shampoo is, it does contain a sulfate. This is not Curly Girl approved, but this is an incredibly effective tool in my healthy hair arsenal. When I get extremely greasy buildup, let's say I use a product that contains a lot of oils or butters and I can tell that my hair is weighed down, I reach for this. This, interestingly enough, is the most gentle and effective way to remove that buildup from my hair. I would have to do so much mechanical cleansing with a low poo to get the butters and oils off of my hair that it would actually be more damaging to my hair than just using this. When I grab this, I do always, 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 with my other hand, reach and grab a deep conditioner, and I have carved 30 minutes out of my day to deep condition with. So don't think that I'm using this on a daily basis. This is like a special once to twice a month clarifying thing, okay? Okay. Let's look at the ingredients list. You can see that it is very, very short as far as ingredients lists go. And the only surfactant in here that I can see is sodium lauryl sulfate. <gasps> it's not the most harsh stripping sulfate out there, but it still has a sulfate in it, which has really good cleansing muscles. Let's talk about the Ion Hard Water Shampoo. I think I talked about this in my chelating video and there are certain ingredients in chelating shampoos that actually have the ability to remove hard water buildup. Anionic surfactants sometimes can do some good in removing hard water buildup, but the rest of the surfactant categories, eh, not, not so much. They're not gonna remove hard water buildup as much as you would like. Hard water buildup's a booger bear. It's very sticky and very specific ingredients can pull it off. Anyway, I talked about what those ingredients are in the other video. Check it out in the eye after this if you'd like. Reading the ingredients label, I do see sodium C14, C16, olefin sulfonate. I also see cocomidopropyl betaine. And then a couple other ingredients that if I tried to pronounce them, I would probably sound really funny. And further down, I see disodium lauryl sulfosuccinate, which tells me that it is not a surfactant, but if I threw it into the old Google, would probably tell me that it is a anionic gentle surfactant. Let's see if there's any other sodium lauryl sulfon sulfoacetate, sulfoacetate, bet you anything that's another surfactant. Sodium gluconate, that's a surfactant. So this product has multiple different surfactants in it, none of which are an actual sulfate. But because there are a larger number of them in this, in this product, you know what I've actually noticed in practical experience? This Ion Hard Water Shampoo is actually more stripping feeling on my hair than the Suave Daily Clarifying Shampoo, which makes sense because there are more surfactants in here. The Suave only has one surfactant, whereas this one has multiple different ones which are going to make it stronger, even though there's no sulfate in here. Next up, I have the Giovanni 5050 Hydrating and Clarifying Shampoo. On the back, they tell you how they rate it themselves, whether it's clarifying or moisturizing. They say that this leans more on the moisturizing side than the clarifying side. I personally find it to be a really nice kind of clarifying shampoo. Not so clarifying that I feel the need to deep condition afterwards, but let's say I've gone four days without washing my hair and I've been doing a lot of running outside and sweating and stuff and the roots are a little stiff. We've all been there. This has the cleansing ability to get all of that off of my hair without having to scrub so much that I'm going to damage my hair. Let's read the ingredients list. So I see water, then sodium, cocoa, Amphoacetate, amphoacetate, lauryl glucoside, sodium cocoa glu glutamate, sodium lauryl glucose carbo carboxylate, <laughs> decoglucoside, cocomidopropyl betaine. 
Those were all back to back to back. Of the top eight ingredients, seven of them were surfactants, which all of which were gentler surfactants, more mild surfactants, less cleansing ability on their own. But you pair them all together and you put them way up at the top of the ingredients list, you know that this product is going to have good cleansing power. And if your hair is incredibly dry, it may not tolerate this product very well because of the number of surfactants in it. Also, side note, as a good frame of reference for how concentrated an ingredient is in your product, it is generally accepted that the first ingredient on the ingredients list is the highest concentration percentage wise of your product. So water being the first ingredient on this ingredients list means that there's gonna be more water in this product than anything else. And the last ingredient, nettle extract, is going to be the lowest percentage wise of the whole product. So there's less nettle extract in this product than anything else. So there you go, that is it for the Giovanni 5050 hydrating. Those, those all in my mind were more clarifying. A couple of them were actually Curly Girl Method approved. One of them was not. These are all going to be my really nourishing low poos. The ones that when I wash my hair with them, they may not get the most greasy, disgusting hair clean, but if I'm going two to three days without washing my hair and then I use one of these, they're gonna get my hair clean, but they are so moisturizing. First up is the Trey Lux Curl, the Curl Renew and Restore Gentle Cleansing Rinse. That's a name, isn't it? The first time I used this, guys, I was a little freaked out. It was the first time in my life that I had used a product that foamed up and bubbled that then I could finger detangle my hair. I had never had that happen before. That is how nourishing this product is. So I had to investigate. I had to know why this product was the way it was. And when I looked at the ingredients list, I saw sodium, laurel, methyl, isothonate, which bless Trelux, they tell you what each ingredient is. That ingredient is a coconut derived product. Then continuing reading, I'm looking for more surfactants and I see one more further down on the ingredients list. If I wanted to be super, super diligent, I could copy and paste each ingredient into Google to see if there's a surfactant that I haven't run across before. But I do know that the second ingredient that is listed is an incredibly gentle surfactant, like really gentle. And I'm not seeing any other really harsh surfactants in here. Maybe one more about three quarters of the way down on the ingredients list. So that lets me know if I were just looking at this product online to see whether or not I wanted to purchase, it would tell me this is going to be really, really nourishing and hydrating. I love using this on my sister. Her hair is very, very coarse and tends to be drier. And this really does get her hair nice and clean without stripping it, which is wonderful. She doesn't have oily hair, just me. Next up, I wanna talk about the Curl Smith Wash and Scrub Detox Probiotic. I, I really like this. This has tiny little scrubby beads in it, but they're like gentle on the hair, but like good for when you are needing to scrub your scalp. Anyway, this is decently cleansing, but it wasn't like crazy cleansing or clarifying. I didn't notice that my roots were excessively squeaky when I used this. So reading the ingredients label, you have water perlite, which I'm wondering if that's the beads that scrub the scalp, sodium methyl cocal tartarate, cocomita propyl betaine, decoglucoside, and that's it for the surfactants. Just three surfactants that are incredibly gentle and mild, which makes sense that this is going to be very gentle, very mild on your hair, which makes sense in my personal experience because I didn't find it to be super, super cleansing, maybe slightly more cleansing than the Trelux, but not crazy stripping on the hair. And 
I don't have a bottle of my beloved As I Am Coconut Co-Wash, but when you look at the ingredients list on it, you do see that it contains cetrimonium chloride, which is that quaternary cationic surfactant, which is what gives that product its cleansing ability. And another co-wash is the Inasi co-wash. When I first tried this, I had tried several co-washes from As I Am. I had tried a bunch of conditioners as co-washes in my hair, and I thought I knew my way around a co-wash. Then I used this, and this was so hydrating and so cleansing. I decided to be mean to this product and I waited till pretty, probably longer than I should have. And I co-washed my hair with this and I was amazed at how well it was able to clean my hair. So I had to investigate and look at the ingredients label and see why this one was so different from every other co-wash I'd ever looked at. The first ingredient is water, next aloe leaf juice, vegetable glycerin, coconut oil, avocado oil, vitamin B, <gasps> then cocomita propyl betaine. This was the first time I had ever seen an amphoteric surfactant in a co-wash. Normally in conditioners, they don't put that kind of a surfactant in them. They tend to stick with the quaternary cationic surfactants, but the amphoteric surfactants have way more cleansing power than the quaternary cationic ones. So even though the cocomita propyl betaine is further down on the ingredients list, it still in this formulation really had enough kick to clean my hair. Continuing on down the line, I see cetrimonium chloride, another very gentle cleanser, and the heteromonium methyl sulfate. So there are two quaternary cationic surfactants in here. So this has actually become kind of the product that I reach for if I'm feeling like co-washing because it is cleansing enough for my type of hair. If your hair is excruciatingly dry, you might save this and use it like less often, maybe once every week or every couple of weeks and then use a more mild co-wash in between. But I think most people are going to find that this is a fantastic co-washing product. All right, guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so, so, so much to every single one of you who made it this far. You're my heroes. I know that this is kind of intense subject matter. Please know that I'll have a list linked down below of all the surfactants that I have compiled. Full disclosure, a lot of the information that I learned on this subject was through Google research. I'm not an expert, I'm a Google spurt. <laughs> I'm a Google expert. And some of the information that was the most helpful to me came from the Sciency Hair Blog. I only have a background in chemistry and I'm supposed to be your friendly local high school chemistry teacher. Instead, I enjoy talking about ingredients on the YouTubes, <laughs> but that only gives me the very basic knowledge to kind of understand what these ingredients are. The author of the Sciency Hair blog is an actual chemist working in a lab. And so she's just a wealth of information that if you haven't already checked out some of her articles, you absolutely should. I will have those linked down below as well. But yeah, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I sure hope this was helpful and I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to y'all later. Bye.